If you're familiar with the channel, you'll know that one of the most useful tools that I've made is a quick change tool post. During the course of making any part on the lathe, I might swap out three or four different tools and the ability to quickly swap a tool in and out in the matter of seconds is a real time changer. And the mill is no exception. By no means do I have a large collection of tooling, but for one part I can easily swap the tooling out 5 plus times and that time can really add up. I currently use an ER32 collet chuck for everything but twist drills and swapping a tool in and out can easily take upwards of 1 or 2 minutes which really adds up over the course of a day. What I want to do is make my own quick change tooling using some import ER20 collets and a Morse taper collet. I'm certain this isn't a unique idea, but I haven't seen too much for a Morse taper manual mill. I'm going to start off using some 30mm cold drawn 1214 steel. I'll cut it down into 55mm long pieces and I'll go from there. first need to form the shanks on the tool holders. I'm aiming for an 18mm shank. The collet I'm using has a really small clamping range, so anything more than 25 one thousandths of a millimetre under might be too small and I might have to scrap the part. And that's probably as good as I'm going to get on this lathe. That's just a couple microns under, and that's really good for an import lathe. Before I take out the part, I'll turn down a section on the main body, just something that's concentric with the shank. I'll need it for when I dial in the part in the forge or chuck. And through the magic of editing, I now have five identical pieces. I've dialed the part to about 10 microns or so of run out. The ER20A model of collet nut that I'm using has an M25 by 1.5 thread, which I'll cut onto the tool holder.
The final thing that I need to do is cut a 20mm 8 degree tapered hole to fit into the collet and that taper really needs to be accurate. Normally you might use trigonometry to find the taper that you need but since I already have a Morse 3 taper collet chuck that fits into the lathe I'm going to use the easy, more lazy method. It's been quite a few months since I've used it, but I've put the old top slide back onto the lathe and by tapping it with the brass hammer, the slide was tapped to an 8 degree, or as good as I'm going to get, 8 degree taper. Now to be honest, I've always had a lot of issues with this compound. It's not really set up for cutting accurate tapers, and after seeing the first taper that I'd cut, I really wanted to scrap this whole project. However, after messing around with the gib screws, I started to get some half decent results. The test that I did showed that I was getting somewhere in the region of 30 or so microns of runout. It's a lot better than I was getting with the ER32 chuck, though I'll have to come back to this. By the end of it, I was getting some pretty decent cuts with the compound. The first cut is on the left, and the final ones are a lot more improved. The last thing that I need to do is cut a face on each side for a 22 spanner to grip it. I've gone ahead and put some of my most used tooling in each of the holders. Most of the time is usually spent going between the 10mm end mill and the edge finder. Now it was while I was going through the collets that it dawned on me that these collets were probably the source of most of my run out problems. One of them was slightly rusty and the other one was caked in it and these are brand new collets. And that's really thrown the rest of the collets into doubt. Now I don't have a good ER20 collet that I can test against, but I'm willing to bet that these collets are the reason for a lot of my run out problems. You know, sometimes you win and sometimes you lose with ER20 collets, but these things were literally about $3 a piece, so I'm not going to lose any sleep over them. As a proof of concept idea, I'm happy to say I'm sold on this idea, though there is a lot that can be improved. First and foremost, these collets need to go. I've checked the taper and the run out, and whilst I could be a little bit better, these collets seem to be the main issue. As an alternative to the ER collet, I might just go and opt for a welding shank, that's just a set screw lock, or I might try and look into some shrink fit tooling. Either way, this is a step in the right direction and I'm looking to improve it in the future.
I only have to spend a couple seconds changing tooling, and I think I've gained about 20 millimeters of space over the old ER32 collet. I have some improvements that I've planned, but that's all for the moment. Hope you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something new, and with that, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.